Hello and welcome to Rapid API. Today we're going to take a look at the basic process of adding an API to the Rapid API marketplace. This process allows you to post the API publicly and potentially monetize it or choose to keep the API private. We will get in how to toggle between private and public later on in this video. So this is our end product from the tutorial. You can see we have an API listing here that allows a developer to test the endpoints directly in their browser. They can also use these code snippets to integrate the API into their application. We have some additional information about the API here, as well as tabs for tutorials, user discussions, and pricing. To start, you're going to need a Rapid API account if you don't already have one. Once you're logged in, navigate to the provider dashboard by clicking Add Your API in the top right corner. This provider dashboard is where you can manage all of your APIs, analytics, billing, user support, and more. Since we don't have an API published on this account yet, it's pretty empty right now. But let's click Add New API to get started. We'll fill out the name, description, and category for the API. Down here, we can choose how we want to specify the API. Currently, you can choose between using the Rapid API user interface, open API specification, or uploading a Postman collection. Rapid API also has support for native GraphQL APIs. We will walk through using the Rapid API UI for the purposes of this tutorial. Now you'll see we are on the overview tab of the API's definition. We can fill out the rest of the information here, including the long description, a logo, a website URL, and terms of use. Note that some of these fields are not required, but if you can fill them out, we highly recommend you do so, especially if you plan on publishing or monetizing the API. You'll also see this update your API section. In the future, you can upload an open API file to update your API, which will overwrite the existing configuration. You can also use our CICD API to update your API's definition, but we are just covering the basics right now, so we will save this for the advanced video. For some context, let's see how our progress looks on the API listing. I'm going to pull it up by clicking View in Marketplace. You can see we have our logo, our API name, and our category here. Let's move on to the settings tab. This is where you can add a base URL where requests will be routed. In our advanced tutorials, we will walk through load balancing and multi-base URLs, but for now, I'll just go ahead and add a base URL. The next important step on our list is adding endpoints, which we can do from the endpoints tab. You can choose between a REST endpoint or a GraphQL endpoint. We're adding a REST API, so we will select REST. Let's name the endpoint and describe it. You'll notice Rapid API also has a few options for formatting the description. You can use Markdown or go ahead and just use the provided toolbar to do so. You can also link to an external doc and describe the documentation here. This is recommended if it's a particularly difficult endpoint or if you feel that the documentation will help developers better understand the endpoint. Scrolling down, we can select our method. Currently, Rapid API supports get, post, put, delete, and patch. There's quite a lot of variety in how you can configure your endpoints, so let's just walk through a basic example of how to use the UI. You can see we have a place to indicate the path. Note that the path does not include the base URL. If needed, you can also use curly braces to specify a user design parameter in the path. For example, for this endpoint, the user defined parameter is order ID. When you add a path parameter, the path parameter tab will also be available. You'll see the name is automatically filled in here, and then we can set a type. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to number. If you want, you can also set an example value, which will populate on the user side of the API listing. Let's look at another example. You can use a query string parameter to add additional parameters to a request. This is done in the query tab. Again, we can add a name, a type, and an example value. Indicate if the parameter is optional or required with this checkbox. For post, put, or patch methods, you also have the option to define a payload for the request. You can add it as a form parameter or as a model. A payload defined as a form encoded parameter is the easiest of the two options. However, defining a payload can give you much more flexibility. You can specify many parameters and create nested objects if needed. To do this, you will need to set a name, description, schema, and provide an example of what the model looks like. The last two tabs we have here are related to transformations, which will be covered in the advanced videos. Let's save and return to the endpoints tab. One final feature to highlight here is the ability to group endpoints. This is a way to keep the endpoints organized on the API listing. For example, I will create a group called pet and add the pet related endpoints. So now that we have some endpoints configured, the API listing is starting to look a bit more complete. We have our endpoints here on the right, 
and you'll notice our endpoint group can be expanded or collapsed. When I select an endpoint, you can see the description and our parameters. The link to external docs will also show up here if provided. If you provide an example value for your parameters, it will be automatically filled in in this field. One reason it is helpful to fill out the examples, even though it isn't required, is that they're included in the code snippet if the developer doesn't overwrite it on their own when they test the API. It also helps developers understand what type of input is accepted. So overall, it makes the integration process and testing a bit smoother. Back on the provider dashboard, we can see the checklist has just one item left, which is making the API public. If you wanna make the API public, you can go to settings, scroll down to API visibility, and toggle the switch. Then your API will be searchable on Rapid API for others to subscribe to and use. Now that we've filled out our checklist, there's a few other basic settings to highlight. These are applicable especially if you choose to make your API public and want to improve the experience of developers using the API. The first is the plans and pricing tab. We're actually going to do a separate video on pricing because there are so many possible configurations, but let's just walk through how to set up a basic example. You can see by default the API only has a basic plan. By default, this plan is $0 and includes unlimited requests, but you can configure this however you please. You can have up to four public plans, a basic, a pro, an ultra, and a mega. Typically, these plans are configured to become more expensive as they go, but also include more requests or features. Let's add a pro plan as an example. First, decide if you want the plan to be a monthly subscription model or a pay-per-use plan. In a monthly subscription, developers will pay one flat price per month. They can accrue overage charges if they go above the specified number of monthly requests. A pay-per-use model charges a specified amount per call. You can toggle rate limiting on or off. This allows you to cap the number of requests in a specified time period by the developer in order to protect the API from being overwhelmed with too many requests. You can also embed a contract if desired. Currently, we support contract templates through DocuSign, so you will need a DocuSign account. If a developer does not agree to sign the contract, they will not be subscribed. Next, we can pick what objects to associate in the plan. For our basic example, we will stick with requests and set a monthly quota of 3,000 per month. You can choose what quota is most appropriate for your API. Next, you can select between a soft and a hard limit. A soft limit will allow developers to exceed the quota, but they will be charged an overage fee for every request past the quota limit. This ensures that a developer's application will continue to function even if the quota is reached. In contrast, a hard limit will stop the developer from making requests so they cannot accrue overages. We recommend setting the overage fee to a small amount if you choose to do a soft limit. Adding features can make the pricing plan a bit more complicated. For example, you can choose to make only certain endpoints available with certain subscription plans. You could use this to make some features of the API available to use and test for free, but requiring a paid subscription for more premium endpoints. This way developers can try using the API before they commit to a paid subscription. Check out our docs for more examples about pricing plans, creating custom plans for a specific user, or creating a student pricing plan to participate in our student program called Rapid API School. Moving on, the Docs tab is another great resource where you can include more documentation for the API, list use cases or features, or in general, provide information that could be helpful for the developers. You can click Edit to add information and format it using the toolbar. You can also preview what it will look like to developers by clicking the Preview button. The last tab to highlight is the Announcements tab. This allows you to send an email to all of the users of the API. Again, you can preview what these messages will look like before sending them. The transformations and security tabs are both a bit beyond the basics we're covering in this video, but we will have separate videos for those in the future. The docs are also linked below for these features. Finally, let's check out the API listing and see a few things that can help your API stand out to developers and help them learn how to use the API. This is the tutorials tab on the API listing. You can add a tutorial here that will be visible to developers. Much like documentation, you can format this using Markdown or our provided formatting toolbar. The headings are also used to create a table of contents on the side for easy navigation. I'll publish this and we can see it displayed on the API listing. On the About page, you will see our longer description is displayed and anything you add in the documentation will populate here as well. You'll also see a section called Spotlights. You can link to external resources such as Medium posts, blog posts, or developer projects using these featured spotlights. Featured Spotlights also support PDF file uploads. 
Tutorials and featured spotlights are not required, but if your API is public, we highly recommend adding at least one of each to make your API listing more complete and more helpful to prospective users. So this covers the basics of adding an API to the Rapid API Marketplace. Again, we're going to follow up with a more advanced tutorial in the future. We also have documentation linked in the description, and our support team will be happy to help answer any questions if you comment down below or email support at rapidapi.com.